Let's talk about some of our favorite things from around the world. Food and cooking. Remember that time you went to bake your banana bread but your oven wasn't working? Or the other time you wanted to make a medium rare steak but your stove was kaput and maybe you thought about using a toaster? How about cooking your meal in the dishwasher? What if you don't have a kitchen? And did you know that with a hairdryer you can cook just about anything? Here are some hilarious, ridiculous and strange ways of cooking food that really work. Car Bonnet Cooking Back in 2017 in Birdville, Queensland, Australia, temperatures went up to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. In the midst of the very hot year, the Queensland police decided to demonstrate how hot it was by cooking up a couple of eggs. They left a pan covered in oil on the bonnet of their car, then cracked an egg. The egg did fry as if it was on a stove. Eggs actually need to reach 158 degrees Fahrenheit for the proteins in the eggs to cook. So how did the pan get hotter than the temperature of the day, which was 108 degrees? The metal in a frying pan is great at conducting heat. The black color, too, aids in absorbing the sun's radiation. This takes the temperature all the way to the point to cook. The cops left the pan in the heat for too long, such that they could not even hold the handle. It was super hot. This officer is an expert and got the egg cooked and served. Cooking with your mouth 2020 goes down in history as the worst year ever. It, however, does not compare to 2018. This is when a horrendous video graced the internet. The video is titled, Cooking with your mouth, and the video starts out normal, like any other cooking YouTube tutorial. The only difference is, instead of using utensils, Reva Godfrey uses nature's own chopping tools to prepare her dish. She bites a range of raw foods, including whole onions, garlic, coriander, lemons, and raw eggs, before spitting the chopped elements into a large bowl. She even crunches a little black pepper. The pain of the ordeal is evident on her face, no doubt. After soaking her saliva mixture and mixing it together, she stuffs it into an uncooked turkey cavity. To finish it off, she cooks the turkey in her oven and seals off all that flavor with a kiss. Oh no, that hurt my eyes to watch. This seems like a joke, but the director behind this project, Nathan Sedia, claims everything in the video is real. He's heard different stories of people injuring themselves while cooking and decided to create a new cooking method. Quite reasonable, but swirling different foods in the mouth is an easy recipe for food poisoning. This is not for the faint-hearted, I promise you. Slap Happy According to the laws of physics, kinetic energy, which is moving energy, can be converted into thermal energy, or heat. That's why rubbing your hands together creates a bit of heat and car parts often overheat. People then started to wonder how much kinetic energy would be needed to cook food, a turkey, for instance. Two students in 1987 from Arizona decided to create an experiment and find out. The decision to drop 25 pounds or 11 kilograms of turkey from the 10th floor of a building after six hours and dropping the turkey from the same distance 72 times, they raised the turkey's temperature from 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. From this, they deduced that the turkey had to be dropped for a further 46 hours before reaching an edible 400 degrees Fahrenheit. On a smaller scale, how much energy would be needed to cook a chicken by slapping? Chicken is safe to eat at 165 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's safe to say that you could cook the bird in one go if you slapped it once at 3,725 miles per hour. All this was indeed a theory until YouTuber Louis Weiss tried his hand at using his customized slapping machine. Hitting the chicken repeatedly got it to 82 degrees. But unfortunately, the chicken was pounded into a paste before it could reach edible temperature. Louis wasn't done and decided to use a steak and tried again. And after 35,000 well-aimed slaps, the steak reached 140 degrees Fahrenheit and was edible, cooked, and well-tenderized. It did prove to the world that cooking using kinetic energy is indeed possible. Dishwasher Dining Back in 2013, TV network TLC aired an episode of Extremely Cheap Steaks, which followed a few people who took frugality to an all-time high. Among them was Stephanie, who demonstrated how she saved on her gas bill by cooking her lasagna in a dishwasher along with her dirty dishes. With the dishwasher running at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, the lasagna took only one cycle to cook through. It came out looking edible. I, however, found this setup very suspect. The smell and taste, I doubt, are legit. 
The show is accused of staging many of its scenarios and that professional actors play most of the part. And with that in mind, can you cook food in your dishwasher? The hot water and steam produced by the dishwasher can run temperatures in the machine up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and with the standard cycle being an hour long, the sustained heat can kill any bacteria and poach food to a consumable temperature. The problem is that poaching an entire lasagna will not allow the water to escape, and this would make it sloppy and watery, not an enjoyable meal. Dishwasher drawers can also be lined with veggies and fruits in the rinse cycle and save you time washing each of them by hand. This is a not-so-recent cooking innovation where innovative housewives poach salmon and veggies in their dishwashers, and chef David Burke took it a step further by releasing a recipe for a Thanksgiving turkey that could be cooked in three dishwasher cycles. Poaching the bird like this will not give it the deep golden brown finish, and also if it's not wrapped correctly, it might be served soggy. But better wet than dry, right? Tarmac Chicken Eating food found on the side of the road is not really a good idea. But what if it was cooked on the road? In 2019, a group of road workers were filmed pouring a hot scoop of tarmac into a wheelbarrow. Tarmac is a mixture of stone, sand and tar that's heated up to 374 degrees Fahrenheit before being rolled up on the surface of the road. These workers rolled up chicken in foil, then placed it in a wheelbarrow and then poured hot tarmac. They covered it with a warm blanket, then added some more tarmac and continued with their work. After an hour, the tarmac had cooled on their setup. They set it aside and went to see how well cooked the chicken was. The dinner idea felt like a joke, but when they uncovered it, they discovered that the entire chicken had cooked all the way through. The taste test was 100% legit. They enjoyed their roast dinner. Toaster Steak If you're a TikTok teen, you've probably witnessed the weirdness in this next cooking method. TikTok user It's Just Me Juliet posted the most polarizing videos the world had ever seen. She takes two perfect steaks and places them inside her toaster. Anyone who appreciates a good steak is feeling a little edgy, but after a few minutes, the steaks popped out perfectly cooked. Even though that steak is a little brown for those of us who enjoy the medium rare, the cooking method deserves a thumbs up. The steak is cooked by the loops of nichrome wire inside the toaster. These nichrome and alloy filaments let out currents, hitting each of them until they glow red hot. The air around the filament reaches a toasty 310 degrees Fahrenheit, and the steady supply of heat rapidly cooks whatever gets in it, bread or steak. One thing though, the fat in the steak will break down when it's cooked, and in a pan it's perfectly okay, but in a toaster the fat collects at the bottom and can become a huge fire hazard. So this TikTok cooking method is not viable unless you want to destroy your toaster, and cause a fire while at it. Grilled Cheese Sandwich Staying at a place without a kitchen, like a dorm or a hotel, can be really annoying, especially if you're craving a grilled cheese sandwich. But you don't need a toaster or a stove to make grilled cheese. All you need is an iron box, aluminium foil, and soon to be a toasted sandwich. First, you spread a layer of butter on the bread, next, construct the sandwich and cover it in the foil, and next, bring the iron to maximum temperature and place it on the foil with the sandwich for 30 seconds, and flip and repeat. The iron can get to a temperature of 428 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than the standard toaster. Using a metal-based covering, the heat is quickly conducted to the sandwich. It toasts the bread and melts the cheese without destroying the iron. Butter has a low melting point. It makes the bread brown quickly. It's strangely cooked, but it's a delicious grilled cheese sandwich. Hair Dryer Hack the beauty community will come to my head for this one. The hair dryer can easily double up as a beauty appliance as well as a cooking appliance. The air a hair dryer blasts out reaches between 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and this sustained stream of hot air is enough to heat up foods with low melting points, for instance, chocolate. What about foods like eggs? An egg has to reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit to cook, so a hair dryer could do the job. The problem with this is that the eggs splash left and right and the outcome is not 100% satisfactory. The hack can be taken to a greater test with chicken which cooks at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Chicken has to be left in that hot environment for about an hour. A hairdryer can only heat one section of the chicken at a time, and this means it would take much longer to cook. That's unless you're this genius who wrapped the chicken in foil and trapped all the hairdryer's heat inside. By attaching the hairdryer to a stick, this guy has created the world's weirdest oven. But after an hour, the bird was cooked and ready to be served. This method blew me away. Under padded pancakes. 
5 Minute Crafts YouTube channel really creates good life hacks. Some look like they'd make your life easier, but others not so much. When it comes to the cooking hacks, they take the gold. The perfect pancake hack does not involve using the normal pancake side like normal people. It uses the underside. You dip the underside of a hot pan straight into a bowl of pancake mix, flip it over, heat it up, and the thin pancake starts to cook. It then peels off without any mess. That just gave me a brainwave. Does this really work? One woman in Brazil proves this method right. She dips her brand new skillet into the pancake mix and flips it, then puts it on fire. And voila, perfect pancakes. But they're a bit too thin for my liking, so I'll stick to the normal pancake mix. Cooking with lava The question, how do you like your steak? If the answer is really well done, then the lava project at Syracuse University, New York is a combined art and geology project that would appeal to you. It allows students and researchers to observe lava in a lab setting, molten to a salt rock which makes 70% of the Earth, melts at a spicy 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about four times the hotness setting on regular ovens. These researchers put their lava flow to the ultimate test. They seek to find out how well the lava can cook a steak. They start by first creating a makeshift grill over a trough. They lay the meat a few inches from the lava flow. The steak has to be flipped in a matter of seconds, and the lava beneath was, however, so hot that the oil dripping from the steak caught fire and almost destroyed the food. The researchers decided to add to their meat feast a few hot dogs and fish slices, and after two minutes, everything came out of the hot grill, black, charred, and burnt. Let's just say the researchers did not enjoy the barbecue feast they had envisioned. Volcano Barbecue In other parts of the world, there's no shortage of natural lava. Over in Siberia, you'll find the tallest volcano. Glyuchevkaya Sopka erupted back in 2020, and as most people ran for cover, a few crazy Russian volcano enthusiasts decided to climb up the volcano to get a closer look, and while at it, they decided to try and figure out just how hot the volcano was. They decided to cook a couple of sausages on the molten rock. You could hear the sausages sizzling. According to these mountain enthusiasts, the sausages cooked in under 15 minutes, and that was a quick dinner. Over the ocean on the island, however, a few researchers came up with a more elegant solution, which was to grill their sausages over lava. The idea would have been rated genius, but the handle for the sausage griller was made of wood, which is a highly combustible material. But to design such an elegant apparatus, the researchers must really love their barbecue sausages. Elsewhere in Guatemala, the papaya volcano has been erupting since February 2021, and locals have started taking advantage of the molten lava. David Garcia, for instance, has started serving papaya pizza in a makeshift oven on the hillside using a metal platter that can withstand the toasty 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Garcia places the pizza in the slightly cooler solidified lava, and it's cooked in 10 minutes. This place, for sure, is like an oven. To test how hot it was, a marshmallow was put inside the crevices of the lava, and after just 30 seconds, the marshmallow came out caramelized, which only happens when the marshmallow is exposed to heat up to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Thank goodness no one put their hand inside the crevice of the lava. So, there's cooked on lava, but we're yet to see food cooked inside lava. In Hawaii, videographer Brian Lowley wanted to see what would happen if he put a can of ravioli over an oncoming lava flow. This was with the lava in Hawaii getting to over 2,140 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat transfer into the can started to create a huge amount of pressure around the can, causing it to expand. This was until the lid of the can burst open. Unfortunately, he could not retrieve the remains of his ravioli dinner. What it is, though, is a feast for the eyes. Frying Fiasco Not all foods were made for frying. On 5-Minute Crafts, they try everything. Another of their cooking hacks involves a deep-fat fryer. It uses a lot of oil. Water raises the environment for cooking to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Oil raises it to 356 degrees Fahrenheit. This oil method causes food to blister and shrink. Best for starchy foods or foods covered in a starchy substance. Creates a crispy coating on chicken that we like so much. Watching 5-Minute Crafts do the same on watermelon was a little overboard. This is a fruit that should not be fried. The outcome is a greasy replica of the fruit. In the States, this is happening a lot, where they put it in batter and deep fry it and then serve it with sauces and sugar and whipped cream. Well, done like that, it does look a little more appetizing. 5-Minute Crafts should take note. Which of these methods made your day? Or on the flip side, made your stomach do a flip? Do let us know in the comments section. 
Till next time.